Hi, Robert Tisserand here with the second lesson in the mini course, How Essential Oils Work in the Body. Last time we talked about bioavailability and today I want to talk about distribution, basically what happens to an essential oil after it's applied to the body. After we ingest an essential oil, it passes into the stomach, then to the small intestine and from both of those into the bloodstream. It specifically passes into the hepatic portal vein, which draws blood directly from the digestive system and passes it directly to the liver. As the essential oil constituents pass through the liver, they are metabolized, chemically changed in a, a two-phase process. This two-phase process changes the essential oil constituents from being oil-soluble into being water-soluble. As, as they later pass through the kidneys, the essential oil constituents are removed from the blood and excreted through the urinary system. 70 to 90% of essential oil that gets into our body is excreted through this route, however it's applied. So in order to have urinary excretion, the essential oil constituents have to be made water soluble. Reasons for oral ingestion include internal infections such as UTIs and digestive disease. And um, urinary infections are particularly amenable to essential oil therapy simply because that is the route of exit from the body. So you know that almost all the essential oil constituents taken into the body are going to take that route. Um, for treating irritable bowel disease specifically, um, you would have to use enterically coated capsules. There are several brands of peppermint oil, for example, that are sold in enterically coated capsules for this reason, because this um, prevents the capsules from dissolving in the stomach. And if you, if you don't have enterically coated capsules, the essential oil actually won't reach the bowel at all, as we have just seen. From topical application, approximately 5% of essential oil is absorbed into the tissues beneath the skin and then into the bloodstream and takes the usual route, same route, um, not showing the bladder again out of the body. We should also remember that from topical application, there is also going to be some inhalation that takes place. Reasons for applying essential oils to the skin include all kinds of cosmetic uses, skin healing, obviously, and many types of pain, whether it be menstrual pain, nerve pain, neuropathic pain as shown here, um, joint or muscular pain. These are all very uh, amenable to essential oils applied topically. When we inhale an essential oil, most of it passes into the respiratory system. I'm, the 95% isn't precise, that's an approximation. But I also want to show you that some is absorbed into the brain and the nose to brain route, as it's called, is going to be the subject of the next lesson. From the lungs in the brain, the essential oil constituents then take the same route out of the body. Reasons for inhalation include respiratory disease of all kinds, uh, mood and behavior issues, and neurological disease because of the nose to brain route.